This week, we continue our conversation with Professor Rob Wood at Harvard University and the Wyss Institute to talk about robo-bees and to convince him to try doing the bee waggle. I'm Dan Berrigan, and this is not another acronym. So why robo-bees? The name is actually a metaphor. It's really just supposed to invoke the sort of social insect, the sort of collective behaviors uh, aspects of this, because when the project started, we were looking at all sorts of aspects from uh, the body, how do we actually construct the robots themselves, uh, the brains, how do we do con sensing and control for these devices, and, and then, but also once you have these things individually going to be relatively simple, how do you have them do interesting things in aggregate, so hence the colony aspect of this. So the thing I wanted to ask you about was the bee waggle. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? Sure, yeah, yeah. Do you, you want me to do it? Do the you waggle dance? Do it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's, I think, a, a, a really cool example of a solution to communication that, you know, it's not how it's being done, although that's super interesting. It's more the, inf the information that's being oh. conveyed. And then how can we understand, you know, there's, they're basically saying, okay, well, I found something over there and it's, you know, by duration and direction of the motions of this waggle, then it tells you, you know, where are you with respect to azimuth and, and how far. And, and so those, you know, those bits of information are, are obviously the, the relevant bit. Uh, and and we, we can sort of take some similar strategies. In fact, that's how we envision this in the future is not having hundreds or whatever, however many robots in the field all talking to each other, that would be kind of a mess. And so having more uh, either point to point or, or more hive centric, if you will, communication where they'll come back and say, I just, uh, you know, I found, um, you know, a source of CO2 emissions over there, so maybe it's a survivor, and you know, go in that direction. And then they'll dedicate the hive collectively will uh, uh, dedicate resources to go and, and, uh, and explore that. Uh, since you know a lot about uh, bees, hmm. uh, I thought I'd ask you a number of bee-related questions. Okay. Okay. So, first of all, better bee-less celebrity: Kit Harrington or Zachary Quinto? Is this bad that I don't know these names? Okay, okay. So Kit Harrington is Jon Snow. Oh, uh, he's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or Zachary Quinto, who is Spock. Oh, Jon Snow. Okay. Sorry, I'm not a Star <laughs> I'm not a Star Trek guy, but Game of Thrones is amazing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so better B movie: uh, Attack of the T Killer Tomatoes or Toxic Avenger? I definitely Attack of the Killer Tomatoes uh, for its sort of comedic value, and Toxic Avenger is a little bit too kind of violent for me. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. From at Flapping Wing asks you, your group transformed piezoelectric devices, which transform voltage into mechanical energy, uh, to flapping motion. How did you come upon such an elegant solution? This started actually back when I was a grad student. and. The sort of predecessor this, projects, the, the this, the whole wing. thing, you know, the the flapping wing robots and the the, the search for um, actuation strategies for them, and it came down to a lot of constraints, really, and a, and a very few choices. So, as elegant as it may seem, it was really sort of out of necessity and you know, a lack of other of other options. So, if you look at motors and try to think about scaling them down, they just won't work. And there's, you know, for the scales that we're talking about, where there have to be tens to hundreds of milligrams in a couple of millimeters in characteristic dimension. The motors don't exist on that scale, and there's good reason. Physics of scaling would say that anything that has sort of sliding or rolling contacts at those scales are going to start to be friction dominated. Uh, and there's also limitations to current densities you can have in coils of wire without thermal issues. And so there's, there's a number of reasons why you wouldn't have motors of this scale. We needed something which was scalable. We needed something which was relatively easy to manufacture. So again, this layered sort of structure was, was nice. Uh, we needed something with a high bandwidth, which was really critical, um, and reasonably efficient. And so all of these things together led us to the, the piezos. And then from that moment on, and it's taken us to this day, we're still making minor improvements, you know, taken us 15 years to get these things to be working well. Um, it may look like an elegant solution, I suppose, but uh, it, it's not without its drawbacks. And so these are things that we that we fight with uh, sort of on a, on a daily basis in lab is how to get every last little bit of energy out of these materials. How do we deal with the fact that we have relatively high voltages that have to drive these things? How to squeeze every last bit of, of efficiency out of them? Tune in next week when we talk about soft robotics and get schooled in insect bands. Until next time, what will you imagine, create, and revolutionize? <laughs>